Hello, lovely Annemiek. It's so lovely to have you. It is so wonderful to be with you, as always. Oh, I First of all, I want to ask you what sacrosanct means for you. And like when you hear this word, what images or sense is conjured up? So it is not a word that I am very familiar with, um, like dictionary wise. Mm-hmm. So I can I can speak to like the energetic yeah. aspects of it. So sacrosanct for me touches into that most inner sacred space within myself. That is that is where where it lands Mm. yeah and so it it is so for me what it does when you're using the word is that it calls on me to tap into that space and to then um, align more and more to the integrity of that energy oh fucking love that thanks (laughs) yeah you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> feel free to use it <laughs> well okay so the kind of dictionary definition of sacrosanct is something around like being too important or valuable to be interfered with and for me when I first heard this word again like I must have heard it in my life but but recently it kind of appeared for me and it was so it just dropped through my whole body with this sense of yes every day is is reverend every day is hallowed every day is cherished but but what am I actually doing to allow all of it to be sacred you know where are the rituals in my life and and this kind of idea of uh right relationship or perfect timing and that everything is happening for me, not to me, that kind of thing. Like, oh, wow, what if it is all sacrosanct in that way? And so for me, it's a very empowering word. And I can see how the church has used it. And I can see these different uh, connotations of it that are very religious or very authoritarian or, or you know, state-led. But I love that you found that, that it had that kind of very similar feeling for you of dropping into the the center of who you are and allowing you to find focus. Mm. It's reminding me of um, how my daughter has has taken on this habit of calling things sacred that she really, really, really likes. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's given some interesting conversations around the dinner table when she's calling her main as <laughs> sacred. <laughs> and it's like, um, it isn't, it is a, an honoring for me. It's about an honoring of essence, um, that is happening. And, um, yeah, so with her, we're kind of exploring the boundaries of, mm-hmm. of where is that? Um, and and what does that tell you um so, mm. yeah and i you know in, in my life and in my work there is no such thing as dogma um and so for me the 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 kind of the the, the church kind of meanings around any of that are just not not very relevant um but there is this this sense of life at the heart of our lives there is something that is so sacred that is so precious um and the minute we start to tap into that even if it's just that little bit the amount of meaning and purpose that we're going to experience grows just exponentially Mm. and then also all the talk about finding purpose and it doesn't get to be about having the right career that is spiritual in nature or whatever you know we make mean about that but there is life cannot not be purposeful when we're honoring that absolutely which leads me actually into something we're going to talk about which is around empowerment 
Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, some days when people ask me what I do, it, it changes from day to day, right? From one day to the next, I can say, oh, I have an online business and, or I can be an artist or I'm a writer or, you know, or I'm, or I'm a life and business coach or I'm a priestess. Like it depends entirely on, on who I'm talking to in the context. Um, and, and for a long time, I used to refer to the industry as a personal development industry. And for some times it used to be the, um, the kind of the helping industry, right? Or like the self-actualization space or whatever it is. But, um, and, and similarly I, to you, I believe I kind of stayed away from empowerment, except that my business wants because it you know it is an entity and it talks to me to be founded on the the, the kind of pillars of empowerment embodiment and full self-expression and so I'm curious about your relationship with the word empowerment and yeah kind of where you're with where you're at with it right now in terms of I guess in terms of it being this sacrosanct thing right yeah I've had a really um interesting relationship with that word empowerment so my background is where I came from um, was um, organizational change and corporate um, executive coaching and I cannot tell you how many corporate clients I've had who said I want that you're helping us empower our people and my very first response is like a yeah! if we start to look at what empowerment means it means in its very nature that it's not something that we can do on to people or for people because they are we're all we're already all empowered we're already full with power and so finding our way back to that power, you know, there's a lot of scope for that, I think. And there's a lot that we can do to help people do that. And a lot about what we can do to help people do that is about not getting in their way. And... I love that, like in an organizational corporate setting, when they say, you know, we want you to empower our people. No, they don't. If you fully empower your Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The very first thing that we start to do is to have a conversation <laughs> about empowerment and about, so what is your role in this system when people are not, because what they mean is, you know, they're not taking initiative and, you know, we want them to take responsibility. Well, of course, there's a whole system in place preventing them from doing that. So the work is not with them, it is with you, my dear. Uh -huh. awesome. <laughs> yes empower them but not too much you know like and that's that's the thing it's like you know or like remind them that they have sovereignty and power and responsibility but don't but make sure they only use it how we want them to use well exactly within these guidelines and and when i tell them to and and not yeah absolutely and so so that that's i think too often when people are using empower the, that word empowerment it is about it comes from that paradigm of how can we just copy things that we have that work for others, um, put them onto people, um, and completely disregarding the fact that people are sovereign, powerful beings. Mm. And so yeah. that's where my, <clears throat> what should we call it? reservations with the word <laughs> um I get that I get that you know for me it is a thing about sovereignty um, and reminding people that they are sovereign and again then like really looking at the etymology of the word sovereign as well and it's like you are the, the 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 royal in your life right like you are the first you are you know the, the king or the queen or the uh the ruler of your realm right and and that in your realm is your body and your thoughts and your beliefs and all of that and I and I I feel like so often that's missed you know people don't really understand what it is that they're asking for or what it is that they don't have or that they're blocking from themselves you know mm. Yeah, absolutely. 
I think that word sovereignty is is such a, um, an overlooked part of ourselves and and you know and bringing then that sovereignty into right relationship with our surroundings mm -hmm. um, and how we are part of this much bigger system I think there's so much juicy work that we can do there yeah absolutely so in term of, terms of I guess your own personal empowerment sovereignty are there any like routines, rituals, ceremonies, you know, practices, things that um, are non-negotiable or sacrosanct in your in your life? I love that question. What comes up very first right now is actually something very practical, mm -hmm. which is the first walk of the day with our dog is mine. <laughs> nobody else's <laughs> and it is my time of um you know when I wake when I wake up right there's my daughter she's almost 11 now so you know there's less hands-on stuff that needs to happen but still there's a lot of like <laughs> making her fall into the rhythm that needs to happen of the day um, so th th this practical, ooh, getting all that out of the way, but then I get my moment mm -hmm. where I very purposefully don't take a podcast with me, um, but just feel my feet on the earth, listen to the birds, mm -hmm. feel the wind, um, and check in with myself, with, with my body. How, how am I today? What's happening? Noticing where all of my busy to-do thoughts are kind of buzzing um, and really setting my intention for the day. Mm. And I might do some mantra singing out loud or I might do some even tapping along the way if you see me kind of moving through the neighborhood kind of going like you yeah, know that's that's me yep <laughs> or I might do some Ho'oponopono work or I might just sing in general um but that for me is a really important anchor mm. yeah I love that that's a daily piece for you and that it you know there is the practicalities of uh of other people in your space and the responsibilities that you have to family life. Um, and then it is a priority, right? That it comes before all of those other, you know, before the clients, before the emails, before, you know, all of those things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it is one of those things that I've really had to learn is that I, ne I need to take that space for myself mm. because I am one of those people, um, Clifton Strengths Test. Yes, I'm um, a major achiever in the sense that I really get a lot of satisfaction from getting things done. So mm -hmm. if I'm not careful, I'm just going to head, you know, dive straight in um, and just kind of find myself at the end of the day going, oh, was there a day? You know, what, 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 what happened? Um, and this for me is like my, yeah, this is where I make sure that I stay connected. Mm -hmm. Also with that, you know, with that inner knowing that inner the inner space and I love the idea of layering mm. so when we're thinking about our rituals and um, one of my mentors Lindsay Perra actually first introduced me to this but kind of thinking about like the how can you just kind of layer in the very practical with the sacred in, in, in ways of creating rituals and rhythms and cycles that are just you know it's like breathing it's it's there's nothing I don't have to get myself to do or to commit or to remember or to well my dog will <laughs> remind me <laughs> um so it doesn't get to be in outside of daily life and I think that's something that for me is really key that the sacred and the practical they, they are interwoven mm. um or they can be interwoven um and and for me that yeah, it gives a very juicy yeah. sense. 
And and then I wonder if there is, I guess, anything that the last couple of years has shown you that is important that you didn't realize before, or like anything that you have made sacrosanct um, purposefully now that, I don't know, I feel like this disruption, the chaos, the the huge kind of change mm. that we've experienced as a as a collective, you know, I don't I don't think that that's happened before in our lifetime, not on such a large scale for us all to be impacted in that way. And one of the things that I believe that that's gifted us is this real like global opportunity to reflect and to get some perspective on the life that we're living and what is important and what isn't important and I wonder whether there, there's been any been any change or anything where you're like you know what this wasn't as high up the priority list as I as it needed to be and I've made a shift around that. Mm. I think this for me has been twofold one was that for me when the pandemic hit I was already uh, running an, a fully online business and so for me it was business as usual it was almost you know there was more business actually happening in that time and in in some way I'm only now getting to a rebalancing of like how does that all sit and fit with where I want to go next um the other part of it is that um of course our daughter has been home so much more um, than ever before and um, I think I've gotten a much deeper appreciation for time to just hang out together without agenda without I've really enjoyed that mm. which seems like when I'm saying it now I'm almost like it seems weird on a meet that you would say that because of course there have been times when I was like, oh, <laughs> give me some space. I want to get like, who are all these people in my house during the day? Right. Because yeah. Yeah. before everybody would go out and I would work from home. Um, but, but that really has been a big part of my just realizing mm -hmm. is how important that is for, for all of us. Yeah. I love that and I agree <clears throat> you know this being overdoing I feel like we've just all been given an opportunity to experience that and to notice what it brings up for us you know where is this enjoyable where is it not enjoyable where oh look there's some shadow stuff here of um, boundary stuff like you know all of it when we are plunged into being we notice uh, all the places that we usually do <laughs> you know yeah, absolutely. And I think there's there's so much more scope for being. It's, I I you know, I think I think actually I thank the goddess for the work that I do because at least in my work, mm -hmm. I am steeped in being <laughs> when I'm doing soul based coaching with people. That is that is where I am at. And that is a really beautiful antidote to my achieving. Um Mm. tendencies and, and and qualities that I have um yeah there's so much more scope for me <laughs> <laughs> oh I love that okay so I'm going to put in the show notes all of the links about how people can come find you and check out soul based coaching and all of those wonderful things um is there anything that you still want to share or anything that you've got that you want to share with our people that you haven't had an opportunity to talk about Mm. so one of these the things that keeps coming back to me in the last couple of weeks is how when we're having these conversations when we're doing this work whatever it looks like right we, we all have our own flavors of it but how there is just this portal opening of spaciousness and um, deep heart I was going to say connection but it's even more it's energy that is really it feels like it's almost like a trap door into that beingness mm -hmm. that it's like this it's not very far away 
And so I just want to thank you for creating yet another space where we can do this together. Mm. I think it's so much of the work that we have to do together as a collective is, some, is about traveling together and about having these interactions and not because we have to get to a certain place at the end of you know this time together mm. but because we we can start to co-create what wasn't here before yeah yeah i have been talking a lot recently about the art of conversation mm. and how you know i was lucky enough to grow up in a house where that happened where it was an art where kids sat at the table with grown-ups and everybody's voices were heard and we were allowed to engage and it, it's an art and sometimes it was like you know and, and it's like a piece of music sometimes it was loud sometimes it was quiet sometimes two people were speaking you know some people one person was having a solo you know there was all of this experience going on and there wasn't an agenda and it wasn't a debate it was a conversation it wasn't like someone trying to win or get to something or prove something, which I believe a lot of people really have modeled for them either at home or at school, right? In terms of mm. dialogue and communication, rather than it being the art of conversation. And so much for me around the work that I do is thought provoking, is about perspective shifting, is about letting things land, synapses suddenly go, oh, and like fire at one another in a way that they wouldn't have before. And so for me, we don't have to have a conversation that is succinct or tidy or has a beginning, middle and end, you know, in a particular format or in a particular way. You know, I really want for people to enjoy it like a piece of music. Mm, yeah. And I always love our conversations because you get that. <laughs> it is. Um... Yeah, I know we're heading towards our time limit here, but there's this whole other part opening. It's like this. I'm just noticing everywhere that this capitalist paradigm sneaks in where things have to have value, where, th you know, where things are like very addressable, pointable at um, consumable value yeah. and I'm just noticing how I want to say how much value <laughs> in that space. <laughs> and just realizing, oh, look at that. There's another one. <laughs> because there is. And it's not about it being consumable. Like, that's not the point of it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this and is it, just... And it's hard to shift from, you know, one... The, the model that we have been conditioned for everything into something else immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And, at the, you know, also just again, want to thank you for the recognition of, of, of what is very front and center and, and sacrosanct for me at the moment of shifting that paradigm and moving slowly, gradually, you know, in, in, in only the way that I can to something different. Mm. Yeah, right there with you. It's, it's intricate, interesting, and um, important. It is. Okay, um, we're going to press pause. And then if you are a, a listener of Sacrosanct Secrets, then you will get the, the, the questions I'm about to ask you on a, on a different bit. So we're going to pause, and then we'll restart inside Sacrosanct Secrets. Thank you so much for coming and joining me today. It's been just a wonderful. Thank you.